19 year um, Modernism was as an art maker, as an artist. I was just thinking, and this goes back to the doubling as well, um, I've seen a lot of the, the works as they've developed over the last few years, but uh, these two works, the, the two top ones here, are two works I hadn't seen until uh, come to be exhibition. Can you tell us a bit more about those? Because there seems to be um, there seems to be a point being made much more directly in those two works. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I guess I guess um, in a kind of direct reading, like the, the motivation behind the work is these are the two cameras that I used in Afghanistan. So I used this particular kind of video recorder, the Panasonic, and the other camera is a um, 7D, which actually, to be accurate, I was using a 5D Canon, so please don't call me up on that. Um, but the, the, the cameras are kind of, they shift um, status in different, in different sort of um, parts of Afghanistan as a war zone. You know, you can be a tourist in one instance, like walking around a big military base, which resembles a city. Some of these bases are huge. We've got like, you know, 40,000 people living in them. And to have a camera, you have to have a commission to have a camera. Um, but you f I felt like a tourist. But then in other situations, cameras are like guns. I mean, to take images and for those images to be misappropriated um, would be lethal, you know, to someone. So um, cameras have this other kind of status over there. And I thought, I was thinking about this um, function of cameras and then trying to like uh, layer this, this other kind of camera that we are seeing in Afghanistan and you can I think that so much has been said of drone technology in this war this is like really the first digital war where um, technology has got to the point where we have unmanned weaponry um, for the first time and that that is highly problematic in so many ways because of course there's um, a kind of removal of the the weapon from the, 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 the deed and the doer, um, and that's tough. And we all have our own opinions about drones, I'm sure, but it was a very simple juxta juxtaposition in that sense that mm -hmm. um, here's this kind of flying eye. Some of them are weaponized and mm -hmm. um, can exert force or whatever. Um, but there are also two drones that were used in Afghanistan as well. So I tried to research the particular kind of drones attached to, to my cameras um, and there are actually drones upstairs in a work where I asked two soldiers and, and also myself, I was involved in this performance as well, to record each other and they move around this desert environment, it's actually the outskirts of a military base and it was very close to a, a drone kind of capture site, it's incredible to see how they catch some of these smaller drones by this wire you know? and I was thinking it was interesting to have these cameras in this environment because mm -hmm. here we were recording each other with these cameras and then at the same time there were these drones flying above us recording everything um, and so what seemed like a very arid open desolate space was actually highly kind of um, surveilled you know and it was um, you know it's, they could probably read my watch better than I could kind of thing. It's, it's something terrifying about that. So that, that's, I don't know if I... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, well one, one thing that uh, when, we, uh, when we were doing the interviews uh, for the book, one of the expressions I remember you came up with, which for me said quite a lot about your attempt to, in some ways, capture, like at the point of view portraits, uh, the, the view of the, the soldiers was this idea of impossible empathy, mm. which for me, it seemed to 
really underwrite all of these works to some extent because you as a, an official war artist are going into this, this, this scene and being exposed to the same things but these, you know, these people uh, are, this, this is their job essentially is to be there for what, eight months at a time. And, um, do you want to tell me a bit more about uh, the idea? Because yeah. I think it's fascinating too. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's part of, it's in, a, in a way, being an official war artist is mission impossible, you know, um, which is great because it's, it presents a whole lot of challenges and problems because you're not there for very long and you're dealing with a, a subculture that is so tightly organised that you can never be a part of that club. Um, even though I come from a military family and I've heard my father and my grandfather shoot military acronyms over the table and I've tried to learn them all and nothing could prepare me really um, for what I met over there um, in terms of the camaraderie. And so on one level you're included in a group because you're wearing a kangaroo or something. But then it's the, when you get into the kind of the sub subcultures and these sub subgroups, very soon you realise that you're always going to be an, an observer, mm. and there's going to be that kind of distance um, always. Which for me wasn't a problem. I accepted that, and that was the kind of um, space in which I started to work. Um, even even if I were to try and extend myself, because I'm interested in. Um, you know, a lot of the things that soldiers are interested in, extreme sports, and in my work I deal with bodies um, taking risks in space, and uh, a lot of the people that I met, that's what they did for fun, as well as um, for their job, you know, they're mm. uh, involved in these kinds of activities, but it didn't matter, it's, if you're not, um, if you haven't trained and been a part of that culture, you're always going to be uh, removed, so that's why I think I was interested in doing a version of the work that's upstairs that didn't involve myself. There is another version of that video where there's two soldiers recording each other and I just sort of walked away and let them do that performance. That seemed like a, a legitimate thing for me to do. Where the one that I... The, the, it's hard for me to look at myself anyway, so, right? <laughs> no, um, but, but the one upstairs, um, I'm so different because I'm not wearing... Um, a camouflage uniform, I don't have a weapon, I don't have a helmet, and you know, they're obviously the combatants, for the soldiers, they've got the gear, they've, um, and also they've got a kind of way that they calibrate their bodies that I didn't understand, that only comes through training, um, which I was interested in. So if I were to set up a little experiment um, that was involved in doubling, we're getting close to gong time, um, I, I would, I would say, why don't, why don't we do something where we both get, well, you guys get the cameras, and one, one of you can move, and the other one will try and mirror your movements. And let's see what, that, what happens there. And of course, they take, the guys were so amazing that they took it on as like a drill, like as if their life depended on it. And I was like, okay, we can chill, it's okay, it's okay. And, um, but then pretty soon the game became very complex because I asked them if they could start to, um, who step each other or, you know, like um, make false movements or erratic movements or try and um, uh, deceive the other soldier. And then that, that's when the, the game became tense because mm. they really took it on. Um, and those kind of moments were uh, in, incredible for me to witness, but I know that I wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't have participated the way they, they were involved. So there was that distance. Mm. Can I just uh, ask one final question and then we'll open to a few questions from the floor. Uh, Sean, there are glimpses everywhere in these works of references to colonialism and to colonial space and to Australian space. Uh, and there's also this um, another um, absent presence. The, there are no Afghanistani presences here apart from one image upstairs at the back of the head. Yeah. Can you speak about possible connections there, or, or there's a kind of a narrative that doesn't unfold, but nevertheless is evolved all the time? Yeah, yeah. I think that I didn't, I didn't want to directly sort of represent what we would have seen in other media. I think was the first um, problem that I had. Although I came very close to exhibiting photos of um, young children who would come to the roadside and wave at tanks. And I, I didn't put those photos in the show. Um, Gillian Brown, the curator, was good at um, 
convincing you not to put those in the show because I think the logic of this show is to, to look at how we were viewing ourselves as a nation. Um, and, it, and it was a kind of um, colonial project in a lot of ways. You know, um, the, the, the military has gone through a kind of cultural turn. Um, it's a complex story, but David Petraeus, the, the, um, you know, the high-ranking military um, general who has had a pretty crazy career since um, mm -hmm. he, he, he authored a, a, a field manual. It was a counterinsurgency field manual um, called FM 324. If any military historians are here, they'll know what I'm talking about. And that, and that basically went from the kind of um, the kind of shock and awe sort of full power General Schwarzkopf technique to winning the hearts and minds. And this is the kind of rhetoric that we started hearing coming up out from the military. And, and so the military was involved in a kind of um, knock on the doors rather than beat the doors in the scenario. The objectives were the same, of course, they still had the, the, the jobs to do that were, you know, pretty tough work, but they try and do it in this different way. And I think all of the ISAF nations, including Australia, took on the kind of um, logic of this FM um, 324 manual. It really did affect the way that um, soldiering and military operations take place within the Western world. And it started looking like soldiers were having to be community workers as well as, um, you know, administering lethal force in some cases. So that was a, that's a pretty tough ask for a soldier to, um, but it was incredible to see as well. In the Australian Army, we had, um, we had, they had, whatever, we, we as a nation have. Um, different divisions. So you have the people who are the trained killers, who are like the special forces people, and they've kind of got the worst job in the world. It's a really tough job. But then you've got a, a section of the military, which is the M, M, like mentoring and reconstruction task force. And they're the ones who go out and try and rebuild communities and um, offer you know schools and um, different kinds of um, civil services. And, and so, that starts to look like a colonial project, in a way. And that's, um, so it becomes very complex, um, the role of the military these days. It's not so straightforward. That's a very long-winded answer, so <laughs> going over time. The thing, yeah. the thing that you mentioned, though, regarding that right at the very beginning was uh, about the media. And yeah. I think that one of the interesting things that your work does as a video artist, and it is interesting, I think, that you are the first artist with a primarily in video that has been an official war artist, uh, is that you are taking the, 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 the technology of the medium that we're used to actually experiencing war through, you know, particularly uh, the, the two wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. You're taking the, really the core of that technology and applying it in a very, very different way. So, you know, we're unlikely to see on, you know, uh, the 7 o'clock news on the ABC, the kind of image that you would see, for instance, where you and the soldiers are facing off with those long kind of shots and the, the view of uh, the tank base in the background in Oriskan. You know, we, uh, we get to see, uh, a, I suppose, a, a version, a mediated version, but we get to see a version of these wars, which is quite different from anything that we normally would see. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> we have, you have time just for one or two very quick questions. Yes. I'm going to sneak in too. The, can you tell me the story about the man on the right? And also, when I first saw this image here on the left, I thought of Stella Bowen's image of a, an Indigenous soldier in the Second World War. What, was I right to draw that conclusion? And what is the relationship? I've got some ideas to the image on the right of it. Okay, um, the first part of the question um, was about the, this guy. Yeah. Um, the, 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 he's a performer from New York City called Bill Shannon. And he, well, he's actually moved from New York at, at the moment, but he's um, very famous within like hip hop community, global hip hop community. And he, um, does a, he has a degenerative disease where he can't actually put too much um, weight on his hips. So he's learned how to do everything that he loves in life, which is skateboarding and break dancing and different kinds of performing on crutches. So they're not um, 
just simply a prop that he uses as a circus act. He, he lives with um, crutches. I think that people like Bill um, redefine disability because um, they've got this kind of incredible will to overcome, uh, which I see also happen with a lot of veterans. They, they, um, they have these kind of limitations that are imposed on them and then, you know, there's those great examples of, of people who, who don't uh, live by those limitations. So, and the, the portraits down there, actually it's another long story, but I produced a short film with um, an, in, an indigenous actor called Maine White, who's, uh, I don't know if anyone watches Redfern now, or mm -hmm. um, there was a Belvoir Street production in Sydney called Peter Pan, which toured, toured the world. Anyway, he's a star actor, I think he's an amazing actor, and he was in a production recently called Black Diggers, and it basically looked at the role of indigenous Australians in World War I. It was a very emotional um, production, and I thought I would paint him uh, in his costume for Black Diggers. So it's not actually World War II, it's, it's a, it's a re reference to World War I's image, an image from World War I, but it's a simulation. It's an actor in a light horseman uniform pretending to be a soldier. So Stella Bowen had nothing to do with it? Not, not in this case, <laughs> but I love Stella Bowen. Yeah. We're, we're together on that one. One more question. Is it OK if I ask a macro talk question? Uh, we've heard about the recent Afghanistan elections, and uh, this morning I heard that uh, there had actually been an increased turnout and people have shown a degree of courage, which they had in the previous uh, election. So um, I've been led to believe that once the foreign troops leave uh, Afghanistan, that um, the Taliban will take over pretty quickly. Um, but is there some real hope for Afghanistan's long-term future? I know is the federal government going to take note of this comment from us? <laughs> <laughs> or um, I'm, 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 I'm not a... The macro stuff is really hard for me, so I'm just an artist, so... I think maybe the people either side of me probably got more measured opinions on it. But my personal take is um, that um, the recent elections were wonderful. Um, particularly, I mean, not only the number of people that showed um, in defiance of the Taliban, but women in particular. Um, I think that was a very powerful statement. Um, and so that, that's encouraging, but uh, it's always going to be um, tough because the, without ISAF, there's going to be a power vacuum even though we've tried to support that nation to look after itself with the you know the ANA which is the local army. So it's a it's a nightmare. It's a very complex situation that I don't think is going to resolve itself easily. I don't think it's going to be a total power vacuum though. That's my personal take. I don't think that we 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 were the the sole security of that nation. I don't think at certain points of the this twelve year war we were doing anything um, to stabilize uh, in a way, but it'll be pretty interesting to see what transpires in the next um, couple of months. Very last question. Yes, thank you. Um, in the scene behind you, um, at the beginning, which you've just seen, um, there appears to be a, a track in the sand as though this had been rehearsed in some way, which mitigates against the spontaneity of the image. Was it actually rehearsed or that's a good question, and I think it's good that you've seen through the illusion <laughs> that uh, that it isn't actually the you know how we talk in filmmaking about takes and the first take. If I was to just do one take and then pack up the camera and go, that would be this one moment. But yeah, there was there were several takes, so it wasn't spontaneous. But I've I've, I've also got my suspicions about this. Yeah. This. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now. Um, that guy's left-handed. <laughs> oh, yes. And I'm right-handed, so it's a strange thing. No, I'm oh, no he's left-handed. Right. So, <laughs> mm. Yeah, I think, I think some of the works here, they never really claim to be um, documents. Mm. They, don't, they were never really claiming to be like uh, authentic, uh, you know, connections to the subject. I'm always looking at the idea of distance and doubling plays into that and um, simulation plays into that. And, this is also a simulation. It's kind of restaging something that I saw in Afghanistan, which was a spontaneous moment of someone balancing a gun. I, I'm really interested in function, like where 
people would look at, say, the function of uh, a gun. It's designed with a purpose, a designed sort of function, and then they project a different function onto it. They project like a power function, like a parasitic function. In this case, this soldier was just balancing this gun, and I thought that's incredible. That's some something really kind of artistic about mm. that, even though they're kind of just playing around. It's a very human image. I, I agree, oh, yeah. absolutely. Uh, to, to me, it seems quite theatrical, and um, you know, when, when I was writing about this, uh, I was thinking about how the the the, the sand. It's. I mean, there's a, there's a still image. I think that Josh uh, potentially took uh, that you can actually see the hill. But, you know, the way that you framed it, um, it, it goes up and it gives a kind of a cycloramic kind of view. So I think it is a, it, it gives you, I don't know whether this is intentional, but I think also uh, the one with Bill Shannon as well, it gives you some clues. And I think that there's an interesting kind of double layering that's happening in that as well. And, you know, not only in a lateral sort of way, but uh, in a kind of a, what's the opposite of lateral? <laughs> but yeah, in an in, in in X and Y sort of yeah. axis. No, I think that's a, that's a really valid thing because I, I like the idea that um, there, there are clues that can be kind of unraveled. Like, I would never ever want to make a, an image in, in the CGI Hollywood sense that you that looks so real or there's an illusion that you can't really define it from like the explosions or whatever. A lot, a lot of my work does something very simple like it just inverts the image. And some people will go, oh, that's just inverted. You know, they can work it out. Yeah. And, then, and the image starts to unfold. And you can, you can see that it's staged or um, it, the idea didn't need it to be real or a document. And so real why, is do you think, um, why do you think they play with their weapons like that? Well, you're not know, supposed to. And if it goes off, I it's know, instant stigma. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, there must yeah. be something deep. Unfortunately, we're out of time. <laughs> 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 Well, good question. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, there'll be a little bit of time afterwards if you want to ask. I'm sure kids and questions personally, you can, I'm sure they'll have be around for a little bit for conversations. Yes, so, yes, we will be around. If you'd like to have another little drink, feel free to ask anyone a question if you'd like to. But before we do that, we will thank Jennifer, Sean, and Jim.